Congressman, New Jersey is already a high tax state. And I know you get a lot of pressure from people in your state who say increasing taxes was going to change and hurt their lifestyle, maybe cause them to leave the state. Now this new proposal, 100% of the billionaires are still going to be billionaires if they have to pay this tax. How's this going to fly in your state? Well, thanks for having me. It's obviously game time, as you said, and one of the key parts of this is the revenue. And, and as, you, as was reported, a lot of these questions are still up in the air, right? And how much salt, the state and local tax deduction, which has to be part of this package, how will that be part of this package? Because for me, that's about getting tax relief to my district. And of course, as you say, there are other provisions that really aren't even written yet in the way that we can look at. And, and we're trying to go through every part and understand how it's going to impact districts like mine. But Stephanie, what is important is that we get both of these packages done, that we get a vote this week on the bipartisan infrastructure bill before okay, the but, president okay, goes away, and then we have an agreement. Then none of that makes sense. If you haven't seen the language, if it hasn't been ironed out, how on earth is that going to happen? And at the same time, you're saying, we got to vote on this thing this week. Uh, uh, how does well, that math well, work? Because Look I'm, at the calendar. Oh, because the, infra the, the, cause, oh, sorry, cause the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which passed out of the Senate with 69 votes, 50 Democrats, 19 Republicans, in the beginning of August, is sitting here waiting for us to act. That's two million jobs a year. That's what the president came to New Jersey about, the, building the gateway tunnel between New York and New Jersey, roads, so bridges, and rails. The other, and, the other, and the other package, as you're talking about, is making sure that we can get to an agreement on that. And that's obviously what we're all working around the clock trying to do, which includes what you talked about earlier, the revenue side of that. And, and obviously that includes climate change, uh, fighting climate change, and child care, and SALT, and other reinstating the state and local tax deduction, and, and all these other provisions. And that's what we're trying to get an agreement on. If we can get to that agreement, to that framework, we can vote, you know, according to some of the folks in my party who are holding up a vote on the infrastructure package, the roads and the bridges, right? They're holding it up until we get that agreement. So, so that's, that's what this is all about. So when? Because let's be honest, Congressman, for the last two months, you've been saying, let's vote on the first Agreed. part and then we'll work on the second. None of that's changed. Tell me what has changed this week. When are you going to vote on hard infrastructure? When are you going to vote on human infrastructure? Well, you're right, Stephanie, about the frustration of not voting. Common sense would dictate that we would vote on this bipartisan infrastructure bill. We've got elections coming up next week. On, on October 31st, the trust fund for building roads, bridges, and, and all our other physical infrastructure literally runs out unless we, uh, unless we have this vote or have a separate vote to reauthorize it temporarily. Right? So all of that is a huge pressure point that we should vote on this. And people back home are saying to me, why aren't you just voting on this bill on infrastructure that's sitting in Congress? Congress waiting for you. But, you know, somehow, for some reason, it's being held hostage by this other bill. So I'm hoping this week, Stephanie and the Speaker, we met with her yesterday, and others really want to vote this week. We need to have the President, though, to weigh in and say, we want to vote this week on infrastructure. I feel, he's got to say, I feel good enough about where we are in the good faith negotiations on that reconciliation package, on the social infrastructure package. And once he feels good enough, I'm hoping that we can get that momentum and, and get a vote. But as you said, time running out here. One thing that jumps out to me is that estimates show we could raise a half a trillion dollars by taxing just 200 companies, a minimum of 15 percent and less than a thousand Americans. What does that say about massive inequality at the super top and bottom in this country right now? Well, I think you made this point very well about a few minutes ago uh, about the fact that some of our companies who do business here and take advantage of our great law enforcement and our infrastructure uh, uh, don't actually pay anything at the end of the day, and that just doesn't make any sense. Everybody here uh, pays something, and the idea that they're not even paying the minimum corporate rate makes no sense. So the 15 percent just adds up, and when people talk to me about it, they, uh, that just is common sense. You know, I, I think we've got to figure out a way with all this to make sure we pay for whatever we put up, whatever we propose, because we can't just keep borrowing on the backs of our kids and our grandkids. And, and I, I hear that all the time. Like, we've just got to be smart about this, and people are, are really worried about our economy. So those are, but fi figuring out all those provisions, Stephanie, you know, are tough, as you said before. The details really matter. You want to make sure you don't craft something that's suddenly a bunch of uh, lawyers figure out how to work around it, that would not, that doesn't work either. So, you know, th this is what we're working on and around the clock, but it, but it doesn't make any sense to me as we're in good faith negotiations, which we've been with across the spectrum for, for, for weeks, um, it, that we'd hold up a vote 
on our bipartisan infrastructure package, which is the roads, the bridges, f uh, climate resiliency, water getting let out of our water. It doesn't. Why, why would you hold that up? Millions of jobs a year while we're negotiating the other package, and, and that's really what's left a lot of us scratch our head. And, and frankly, back home, for whether it's hardworking men and women of labor or others saying to me, "Why are you holding this up?" And, and we're just, and many of us are asking uh, our leadership, "Please just bring this thing for a vote. Let's get this done across the finish line. Let's get a win for the country here."